In this video, the goal is to solve for the output voltage V0 and current supplied by the op amp I0. This given circuit is a modified version of an inverting op amp amplifier. The input is applied to the negative input pin of the op amp. The positive pin is grounded. There is negative feedback. In the feedback path, we have a T or a Y network of resistors. We will solve this circuit using ideal op amp assumption. This states that when negative feedback is present, the input voltages at the op amp input pins denoted by V plus and V minus become equal. Also the input currents to the op amp pins denoted by I plus and I minus become zero. In other words, under negative feedback, the op amp internal circuitry works in such a way that the output voltage attains a value needed to force V plus equal to V minus and I plus and I minus to be zero. There are two main ways to solve this circuit. In this video, we will see both approaches in action. Let us look at approach one first. This approach is based on deriving a general expression for the output voltage in terms of the input voltage and resistors. To do this, we ignore the values of the resistors. We use ideal op amp assumption in conjunction with node voltage method. Node voltage method is covered in other videos in this channel and a link is provided at the end of this video. Let us write the circuit equations. At the positive op amp pin, the voltage V plus is equal to zero volts. This is because this pin is physically grounded. Applying the ideal op amp assumption, the voltage at the negative pin is equal to voltage at the positive pin is equal to zero volts. This zero voltage appearing at the negative pin is called a virtual ground because this pin is not physically grounded but it has a zero voltage across it. We mark the voltage at this intermediate node as Vx and the voltage here is V0. Let's apply Kirchhoff current law to the negative pin. We mark the branch currents flowing away from the node the voltage here is 0 volts. This branch current is given by 0 minus V in over R1 and this second branch current is given by 0 minus Vx over R2 and since I minus is 0 we get this is equal to 0. Similarly, at this node, we have three branch currents and applying KCL, we get this branch current is Vx minus 0 over R2. This branch current is Vx minus 0 over R3 and then this branch current is Vx minus V0 over R4 and this is equal to 0. Now we have two equations and two unknowns V0 and Vx and we can solve these equations. We can symbolically solve the equations using Mathematica. Using the solve command, we can solve this first equation to get the intermediate node voltage Vx, which is shown here. Using both equations and the eliminate command, we can eliminate Vx from these two equations. And this gives the following solution. Mathematica is able to give three different equivalent expressions. We can use any one of these. Suppose we use this one 
then we can very easily manipulate this equation to express the output voltage in terms of input voltage which is shown here. So this gives a general solution for the output voltage in terms of input voltage and resistors. We can also solve these equations by hand. We can show that we get the same answer for Vx and V output. Please pause the video now if you wish to study these uh, hand solutions in more detail. We can see that the output voltage V0 is independent of the load resistor RL. Also the output voltage does not depend on the internal voltage gain of the op amp amplifier. These are two important consequences of using ideal op amp assumption. Using the derived expressions, we can now substitute values and get the answers. Thus Vx comes out to be minus 0.6 volts and V0 comes out to be minus 2.6 volts. We can see that this circuit is providing a negative gain of minus 26 over 3. Using the values of Vx and V0, we can solve for I0 by applying Kirchhoff current law at the output node. And solving this equation gives I0 equal to minus 760 microamps. This minus sign means that in reality, this current I0 is flowing into the op amp output pin. Thus, we have solved for V0 and I0 by using uh, approach 1, which involves finding the general expression for the output voltage first. Let us now look at approach 2. Under this approach, we just apply ideal op amp assumption and solve the circuit directly using node voltage method. In this case, the voltage at the positive pin of the op amp, V plus is equal to zero volts. Thus voltage at the negative pin of the op amp is equal to voltage at the positive pin is zero volts. This means the voltage at this node is zero volts. Now we apply Kirchhoff current law at this node and we assume branch currents are flowing away from the node. Writing the KCL, we get this branch current is zero minus V in over 1K. And this branch current is zero minus Vx over 2K. This is equal to zero. Now we move to node X. There are three branch currents at this node. This branch current through the 2 kilo ohm resistor gives Vx minus 0 over 2K. This branch current is Vx minus 0 over 3K. And this last branch current is Vx minus V0 over 4k and this is equal to 0. Finally, we apply Kirchhoff current law at the output node. Uh, there are again three branch currents here. There, this branch current is minus I0. This branch current is V0 minus 0 over 10k. And this branch current is voltage at this side minus voltage at this side divided by resistance. So this is V0 minus Vx over 4K and this is equal to zero. These circuit equations can be manipulated and converted to a standard matrix form as shown here. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. After converting to standard matrix form, 
we can now solve the equations using any means. For instance, we can use the numpy package in Python to solve these equations. Uh, the syntax is shown here. If you wish to use Python, please follow the steps here and pause the video now to study the syntax. Using Python, we can see that Vx comes out minus 0.6 volts. V out comes out minus 2.6 volts. And I out comes out minus 760 microamps. And these values are the same as before. We can verify the solution using pSpice. This is the same circuit constructed in pSpice. Please note that the circuit is drawn a little bit different. This is because it is not possible in pSpice to flip the positions of the positive and the negative pin. So here input is being applied to the negative pin and the positive pin is grounded and there is negative feedback. We can simulate and then look at the bias voltages. We can see that the voltage at pin 2 is 32.87 microvolts, which is quite close to zero. Vx is minus 599.74 millivolt and V output is minus 2.599 volts. And these three values are quite close to what we calculated using the ideal op amp assumption. We can also look at the currents. We can see that the input currents to the op amp are around 80 nanoamps. Under ideal assumption, we assume them to be equal to zero. The output current is 759.70 microamps. And if I click here, this shows that pSpice has calculated this current going into the op amp. And therefore, this is the reason why this has a positive sign. And our I naught, which was assumed to be flowing out of the op amp output pin, had a minus 760 microamp value. Overall, we can see that the results obtained using the ideal op amp assumption are fairly accurate for the given op amp circuit using negative feedback. Finally, we can compare the two solution approaches. Both approaches have in common that they rely on the ideal op amp assumption and involve use of node voltage method. The second approach is a quick and efficient way to get a specific solution, especially if you are using a computer program to solve the linear equations. The first approach provides a more general solution. It provides more insight into the circuit because it explicitly relates the output voltage to the input voltage and the resistor values. This concludes this video. Thank you for watching.